What an amazing uh, venue and so very honored to be here this evening with so many pioneers and incredible uh, leaders in aerospace. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished Royal Aeronautical Society members, supporters, and aerospace enthusiasts. I am truly honored to be here with you this evening. I am so proud to have spent uh, my past 30 years in the aerospace industry and over the past three decades, the partnerships that have developed have been the joys of my life. It was one year before Wilbur Wright was born that the founding members of the Future Royal Aeronautical Society first gathered. In 1866, your founders were six trailblazing aerospace pioneers who boldly set their gaze beyond hot air balloons to powered heavier than air flight. They sought what we all want for this amazing industry, to do more, to push farther, and to redefine the possible. Among them was Seminole British Marine Engineer Francis Herbert Wynnum. He presented his research titled Aerial Locomotion at the Society's first meeting. His findings shifted the paradigm. Now I won't be able to explain in any detail how impressive his lecture truly was. But he extolled the benefits of high aspect ratio aerofoils and the concept of superposed wings. Truly an engineering marvel that started us on this journey. The port report was revolutionary. It was stated, perhaps not in these words, but in today's words, a game changer. Chairman Duke of Argyle agreed, stating, I think the paper read is one of, the great, of great interest and importance, especially as it points out the true mechanical explanation of a curious problem. Indeed, talks just like we do today, doesn't it? Indeed, Wenham's aerial vehicle design elements became the basis for biplanes, and one of the most noteworthy of this kind was the iconic 1903 Wright Flyer. This was famously the Wright's first powered airplane. It flew for 12 seconds for 36 meters almost 115 years ago to this very day. Where would the global aerospace industry be without our British contemporaries? The answer is not far. For the Brits have always been on the leading edge of aerospace development. You've launched us into the stratosphere of the possible inspiring us all from airplanes to spacecraft and everything in between. The UK-US often lauded special relationship, our genuine partnership, is essential to our innovation pursuits. Like Wynnum and like the Wrights, we all wonder what promises tomorrow holds and how our field will develop in new and yet to be imagined ways. As leaders and luminaries in the field, we all have the opportunity to be aerospace innovators and disruptors. So tonight, in the tradition of this gathering, I'd like to take us on a journey through the aerospace ecosystem, where we've been, where we are, where we're going, and how we'll get there. So let's start. Where have we been? When Bill Boeing started the Boeing Company more than a century ago, he did so because simply he believed he could build a better airplane. We are embarked as pioneers, he said, upon a new science and industry in which our problems are so new and unusual that it behooves no one to dismiss any novel idea with the statement, it can't be done. Those of us here in this room know just how true that statement is, how much can be done, especially through partnership. Boeing's long-standing relationship with British industry, the armed forces, and the air transport industry dates back more than 80 years. Our enduring bond with the UK is a great source of pride for us and one I value deeply. We are committed to UK security, competitiveness, and growth, and have been from day one. It was in the summer of 1938 that our heritage firm, North American Aviation, sold the T-6 Harvard to the British government for aerial reconnaissance and training. And one must not overlook the North American P-51 Mustang Mark I and subsequent iterations which were developed for the RAF, its first user. 
1939, Pan American inaugurated the first transatlantic northern mail service to Southampton on a Boeing 314 Yankee Clipper. And just four days after that, Pan American offered the first regular passenger service from New York to Southampton on the Boeing Dixie Clipper. What the market has demanded, we collectively have delivered. Then and now, our special relationship, our mutual contribution has always been necessary. From the battlefield to the factory floor to the boardroom, British influence in the aerospace industry and to the business environment writ large has been tremendous. The pioneering spirit inherent in this great nation has always been and continues to be a great marvel. From Frank Whitt Whittle's turbojet engine, the basis of our entire industry today, to Martin Baker's Air, to Martin Baker's aircraft's first live ejection test, an incredible engineering talent challenge emblematic of the risks taken in the name of freedom. To the Concorde, a benchmark of performance and ambition for the designers of today and tomorrow, and an example of how important national ambition and incredible leadership are. But even when we've been competitors, We've still maintained that mutual trust and respect, that partnership. It's a sophisticated nuance that makes us special. <laughs> Amid an ever-changing industrial and societal landscape, we understand that we cannot afford to be insular. That is why even today, the US government looks to the UK on how to innovate business models and create novel contracts throughout the life of a capability. Just look at the deals constructed around the RAF Chinook Mark VI and the most recent P-8. You are leaders in operating with great creativity and a forward-looking approach for whether with military aircraft, commercial aircraft, autonomous underwater and, or air vehicles, satellites, or rocket ships, we are driven by the art of the possible. Perhaps Sir Arthur C. Clarke former chair of the legendary British Interplanetary Society said it best, the only way to discover the limits of the possible is to go beyond them and to the impossible. We have always and will continue to push boundaries for the sake of humankind. So, where are we now? Our ambitions in aerospace have evolved over the years. From speed to stealth to space to efficiency, one thing has remained constant. The enduring necessity to deliver products and services that can connect, protect, explore, and inspire the world. The UK today is a critically important ally for achieving this end. The supply base and technology partners here are among the world's very best. I know this firsthand. From a Boeing perspective, I see every day how the UK workforce supports major programs including Apache, Chinook, the C-17, the P-8, Scan Eagle, Tanker, and even the all-new 777X, just to name a few, which underwent wind tunnel testing most recently near Farnborough. Our commitment to the UK prosperity agenda remains steadfast. As we grow our workforce, we become even more woven into the fabric of the industry here. We are truly a local company, and for that I am extremely grateful. Over the years, I have had the privilege of meeting with our extraordinary teammates in Bristol, Gatwick, Heathrow, Lossie Mouth, and Yeovil, who make our lofty ambitions a reality. Because at the end of the day, we are called to be the ultimate systems engineering company. It is one thing to have ideas, or to have ambition, or to even have all the facts and figures, but it is entirely different to make it all soar. That's why locally we use complex data analytics to complete the missions of today and intercept the issues of tomorrow. This includes engaging in gaming scenarios, leveraging simulator suites to develop future systems and platforms, and even completing engineering and aircraft maintenance training at Boeing Flight Services near Gatwick. Having the right teams 
and the right information at the right time allows our customers to operate at peak efficiency in the air, on the ground, and in the hangar. We are truly committed to equipping our UK partners with everything necessary for a smooth future of flight. This year's accomplishments serve as proof points towards this goal. In the spring, we announced Boeing's Horizon X investment in reaction engines. The Oxfordshire based hypersonic, I would be better if I hadn't spelt it out. The Oxfordshire based hypersonic propulsion company. This is really cool. Reaction is most known for its Sabre, its synergetic air breathing rocket engine. It's a hybrid engine blending jet and rocket technology capable of Mach 25. Did y'all hear me? Mach 25 in rocket mode for space flight. Throughout July, other achievements have continued that same spirit of innovation focused on the future. The completion of the Northern Ireland Centennial Wing STEM aircraft build with Air League and Royal Air Force Air Cadets. And I was thrilled to have the opportunity to sit in the aircraft and meet the cadets who built it at Riot. The launch of the STEM Build Challenge Falcon 2 in concert with you, the Royal Aeronautical Society, and AeroBility to increase accessibility for flying for disabled people. And in late October, the opening of our Sheffield facility, just one part, but an important one, of the Boeing UK story. 52 people employed, including 25 apprentices, and this is just the start. Now, Every 737 and 767 that rolls out of the production line in the U.S. contains parts made by Boeing here in the U.K. Our present operations may be formidable, but what will tomorrow bring and where are we going? What will the aerospace company of the future look like? It was T.S. Eliot who said, only those who risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. So we press on. As we look ahead to the future of aerospace, the fundamental need to connect, protect, explore, and inspire will remain at the forefront of our ambition. We will undoubtedly see more impressive innovations and partnerships to achieve yet unimagined breakthroughs. The Farnborough Air Show this summer provided an optimistic preview of what is to come, while also paying sincere homage to the past. It truly took my heart, my breath away to see 100 aircraft representing the RAF over the years in the fly past over the mall following a parade by personnel. A true display of tenacity, skill, and gallantry, as Her Majesty remarked. Now, together as an industry, we are innovating what would have seemed like impossible fantasies just a few decades ago. Artificial intelligence and virtual reality autonomous transport and the Internet of Things, hypersonic aircraft and advanced manufacturing, urban launch corridors and air traffic management for personal vehicles in the sky. Most generally, technology that disrupts almost every industry and every country for every one of us. It is my firm belief that in the not-so-distant future, we not only have commercial airplanes flying as they do today, but also small mobility vehicles, particularly in cities. Truly, the entire aerospace ecosystem is evolving. To be sure, the path won't be easy, but it was never promised to be. So, that in, so in that spirit, let us consider opportunities for the aerospace industry as we prepare to reach our greatest heights. The first opportunity resides in increased air traffic. Air travel remains a vibrant market building on the trend of the last several decades. Our company's latest commercial market outlook released just this year projects robust demand persisting over the next two decades. More than 80% of the world has yet to fly. Last year alone, 100 million people flew in Asia for the first time ever. And in Europe today, a Boeing aircraft takes off every 15 seconds. I won't wait for 15, though. Just want to make sure you all are awake. 
Potential air traffic growth of this magnitude means significant growth isn't just on the horizon, it is here now. Over the next 20 years, the industry will require more than 42,000 new airplanes as passenger traffic increases by 4.7%. That outpaces the growth of the U.S. gross domestic product. This results in nearly 5 trillion pound commercial airplane market. If you didn't know, Heathrow alone handled 78 million passengers just last year. These numbers combined are impressive. Some might say staggering. I say that the energy and the potential is astounding. The skies are already congested. Now is the time to get ready. We need to modernize the system, to innovate new solutions, to collaborate on interoperability. And as we have identified the problem, so too must we propose a solution, airspace optimization. I would be remiss here not to give mention to your 2017 right name lecturer, Martin Rolf, CEO of Nats. Martin last year described how investing in new technology and modernizing aerospace will make today's safe, efficient, and reliable service possible and even improved in the future. To that end, we too are transforming the market with 21st century technologies in anticipation of the next generation of air travel. We recently announced a collaboration with artificial technology company Spark Cognition on unmanned aircraft air traffic management solutions. We have stood up a new organization called Boeing Next, which will leverage our research and development activities and investment to solve the transportation challenges of the future. Our, our approach includes improving our environmental performance. As an enterprise, Boeing has an unwavering commitment to sustainable innovation and performance in our products, services, and operations. We're a member of Sustainable Aviation, a long-term strategy to ensure a cleaner, quieter, and smarter future for the national aviation industry. It is an essential to commitment to and partnership with major UK aerospace industry. But let me be clear. There may be a regulatory requirement, but this is about doing what is right for our employees, our customers, and communities. This is who we are. The second opportunity for our industry that I see resides in contested space. For as exciting as the idea of exploring space is, we would be naive to believe it is uncontested. Indeed, the presumption that our GPS satellites and other space architecture is not on our adversaries' radars is just not true. Beyond allowing us the ability to navigate through our daily lives with our phones and not get lost, space enables everything our brave men and women do in uniform to protect us from harm. At a hearing in Washington, D.C. last year, U.S. Air Force General and Commander of Air Force Space Command John Raymond put it bluntly. Integration has been our strength, but we find ourselves at the intersection of high reliance and vulnerability in the space domain. Our wideband global SATCON satellites play an integral part in military strategic and op tactical operations coordination. As a constellation, they enhance all available communication capability and coverage. The full system draws on insights learned from our commercial practices, which we've built into a military structure at little to no cost. But this caliber of enhancement and innovation is not unique to my side of the pond. The UK Space Agency has efforts underway to enable commercial space flight activities to be carried out from the UK for the first time. This great ambition includes launching small satellites into orbit, permitting manned suborbital operations for scientific experiments, engaging in space tourism, and supporting a multitude of government initiatives for space-related innovation all with the goal of growing the UK share of global space activity to 10% of the global market by 2030. Indeed, for all of us, bolstering and preserving the network above us in every orbit is a priority. Using autonomy and artificial intelligence, we are leveraging all current capabilities to be an engine for change, 
a force for good. Protection and loss mitigation strategies must keep ahead of the proliferation of threats. To stay connected and protected, we must operate with that mindset when we consider how to make our systems not only capable, but resilient. The third opportunity for our industry is attracting and recruiting talent. Our industry is nothing without a highly trained and engaged workforce. Increases in defense budgets, commercial aircraft orders, and new programs have made it imperative that we hire employees with STEM educational backgrounds. Yet we often find ourselves contending with technology companies for those skilled workers. But really, what industry is more technology focused than aerospace? We touch minds and hearts in our pursuits. The competition for talent on a global scale, I believe, presents an opportunity. It is an opportunity to invest in students and all those who influence them from the start, preparing and rewarding, exciting them for a rewarding career. We must push boundaries. As such, we have made several commitments just this year. Boeing's First to Mars initiative, a comprehensive experiential learning framework that encourages interest in STEM and inspires the next generation to see the future in space as their future with Boeing. STEM signing days in the United States to celebrate high school seniors as they make commitments to some of the top schools in the U.S. Investing in Newton Europe to launch STEM-focused Newton Rooms focused on experiential learning across nine European countries. Supporting the Bush Institute's Global Leadership Impact Center's Women Empowerment and Global Leadership Program, and partnering with the National Science Foundation to accelerate training in critical skill areas and increase diversity in STEM fields. These initiatives will develop future innovators and encourage more people to consider a STEM career. Individuals like Aaron Townsend, a solution architect at our offices in Bristol. Aaron was given the opportunity to work at Boeing for a three-month internship while still at university. We were blessed that he joined us full-time following graduation. He has designed information systems and IT infrastructure solutions that support our company's security. Aaron has said, I feel a real sense of pride working at Boeing in a role where I can see my work making a difference. This is truly a win-win scenario. Here in the UK, we commit to emerging students and apprentices who make up much of the workforce, and we offer them the opportunity to work for a global engineering enterprise. The fortitude of the applicants gives our industry the best opportunity to evolve for the future and succeed. So, what is next, and how will we get there? A true hallmark of great leadership that I've always admired is not only knowing where one wants to go, but how we will get there. The pioneers before us set a high bar and provide us with worthy examples, but where are the pioneers of the future? They are here in our schools today, with you, with me, underscoring why our mutual STEM initiatives are essential for inspiring interest among our youngest innovators. We must continue to foster genuine curiosity and enthusiasm for the industry among young girls and boys. It will only be by harnessing the creativity and intellect of everyone that we will truly achieve our greatest goals. This takes work, commitment, partnership, and above all, we must refuse to be complacent. How do we encourage industry teammates to reach higher, embrace change, and learn from failure? How do we inspire and energize others? How do we dis demonstrate a culture keen to adaptability and resilience? For what if the Wright brothers had given up after their first flight attempt? What if Frank Whittle had forgone inventing the jet engine with a, because a patent for a similar project was deemed technically unfeasible? And what if we viewed the, the moon simply as a destination and not just a pit stop to Mars and beyond? That's why we must all do what others only dream. As Bill, Bill Boeing once said, forever new frontiers. In closing, the future of flight is bright in the UK and around the world thanks to the stellar works of groups like the Royal Aeronautical Society.
The three opportunities I've shared tonight to address air traffic, contested space, and talent are just the starting point for what I believe we can truly accomplish together. We must not only capitalize on these, but also identify and take action on the next opportunities, wherever they may be. In the years to come, let us lead the way. Let's continue to shape the industry. Let's be on the cutting edge of trends and truly build the future for commerce and governments around the world en route to an even more spectacular tomorrow. Thank you for the tremendous honor to address you this evening. Leanne, thank you for a, a very wide-ranging uh, and absolutely inspiring presentation, uh, very well worthy of the, uh, the prestige lecture that this is, so thank you very much indeed.